So, uh, thank you, Ross, for brilliant introduction. Uh, I try to integrate most of what we talk uh, already and show it in Chris Alice Broad some data set examples. But basically, the limitation of time means that I will probably go very quickly through a few things, but uh, you can always just uh, ask us on the forum or review the slides later. But uh, of course, please leave the questions if you want to go back to some interesting part for you. So uh, background, my high pressure uh, crystallography background is not huge, uh, I would say. Uh, it's uh, it's basically my background is in Chrysalis Pro and uh, Igaku instruments. So I would uh, I would like to say that the presentation, if I can change the slides somehow, yes. So uh, I would want to focus, we Ross give us the, the scientific background and the theory I was really where, what and how in Chris Alice Pro. And r roughly, I just want to so, uh, show that automatic and correct data processing in Chris Alice Pro uh, just works. If you set up everything correctly, if you center your crystal correctly, if you provide a reasonable open uh, uh, your uh, Dark opening uh, angle to the software, it will just work automatically, and you will have to just review data and do uh, corrections at the end. And but as we show, this field of crystallography very often uh, doesn't work as easy as normal stuff. And uh, also, it's much easier to collect mistakes with normal measurements, as there is usually some redundancy. You can leave the data away if you don't like it. In case of high pressure crystallography, the, 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 the small amount of data that we already have, limitations that are uh, with, uh, done by the holder of your sample, the diamond David, as I means that everything you lose because of uh, not the best beginning is what you can uh, be on the problem. So, it all works now. Nice. The, 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 the most, I think, practical problem uh, is finding a correct cell, especially if you go to more advanced stuff, when you're loading multiple crystals of the same uh, compound or different compound, when you really go to this high pressure and you, you experience phase transition, you're going to uh, twinning uh, incommensurate and even more crazy uh, crystallographic stuff for all those this. Chris Alice Pro has a solution very well designed and easy to use. And uh, basically, this is what I want to show you how to access this tool and how to do it and some examples. So uh, Ross mentioned uh, that it's a standard workflow, and this is how we usually do it for the small molecules. So you find the UE cell, but just start screening a crystal. We do omega or, or phi scan. And then you do the pre-experiment, which is usually 10 degree omega scan with different uh, omega and theta uh, settings to catch the full resolution. Then you have automatic collection of strategy. Then you collect out of process. There is a scaling uh, and a pre-collapse option collection done always uh, after processing data. And then auto chemics kicks in and solve, refine, and you have to just finalize if needed in case of small molecule crystals, but it's highly advisable that always do the numerical absorption. Uh, I would say that not all people think it's necessary, but even on very low mu crystal, they improve the data a lot for multiple reasons. Think only uh, protein crystallography don't do that on general, but for the small molecule we do, and then report the publish. And if we go to the how it was imagined in Chris Alice Pro, you should be able to do a similar thing in uh, your high pressure crystallography work. So as Pierre presented, uh, we just start a high pressure experiment, enter DAC uh, opening angle, then you do the high pressure pre-experiment, which is, uh, the difference here is that when you screen and you just want to see if uh, what exposure time you have, you have only around five degree of phi scan, uh, which, always allows you plus minus from the zero that which always allows you to shoot through the duct so you don't have to worry about the uh, 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 anything 
but pre-experiment do what Pierre showed us in the morning, two scans from back and and uh, and front of the DAC, from both sides of the DAC using both opening angles. And that in theory allows you to uh, check the wobble vector or misalignment vector. But I will try to talk about it because there was a question and I want to show you. It's a it's a powerful tool, but you have to understand how it works and how to use it and when and where is it. And then just before you launch your, launch your strategy, it's extremely uh, important that you review what cell Chrysalis Pro choose to collect data. If you are worried that if you want to collect, if you have multiple crystals and you want to collect for other crystal or for other reasons or whatever, it's good to, 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 to select the user cell, lock the auto processing. And with all those things done, you can expect that uh, uh, the one thing that you have to also adjust, which I would recommend is, is uh, record crystal movie or at least on one degree. Uh, and then the auto processing will kick in, process your data, on fly uh, shadow uh, generation. Uh, it will do scaling and empirical absorption without the problem. And in most cases, uh, it will solve if it's like normal data, if you have enough completeness. So, uh, so if you uh, if you move to my next slide, I want to uh, show you the that auto processing works. So I have some data sets that I selected, and let me go to auto, and I have uh, data set that I clean from all uh, all stuff that. Uh, it was here, so I have no data reduction results, nothing here. Uh, and we can quickly have a look how it looks on, in Eval 3D. It is always nice to have a uh, look on the data, already exported the data, and you will be able to see that donut shape, which was mentioned by uh, Ross only also. It's not see collected fully what we could access, because that was just the example that he collected, but you can see the all additional signal coming from, from the duck and including the diamond. And only inside you can see the reflections of uh, your crystal. And in this case, it looks like single crystal. So I don't worry a lot that it will not do an auto processing. And start, stop, and I will go full auto analysis. So. I will allow Crystallis to, to find the unicell automatically itself and process data, everything in the back, and even try to solve the structure. So it will take a minute to start. And uh, yeah, Windows. And it will go on automatically. And all the knowledge that draws with Matthias developed and put inside the Crystallis Pro will work now automatically for, uh, for you if you did everything correctly as we discuss. So while we're waiting for the data reduction, let me just uh, quickly open a few data set to show you other Eval 3D the creation to see how it looks. So this is like the more serious uh, data set. We have more background, uh, uh, more uh, rigs, so we can see exactly how it looks also in Eval. Mm -hmm. So let's move the slider. Yeah, so we have the same shape as we discussed. It's a limited access to the crystal. We can see that the crystal is aligned quite flat in the dark, but we can already clearly see from this image that it, it is not a single crystal uh, as we would like or maybe it was designed not to be a single crystal uh, in this experiment. If we rotate it, you will clearly see that there is a one more uh, periodicity inside. And we have a quick overview of what's inside. And we can clearly see, yes, there are multiple crystals. So this is the one that was observed. This is the ruby. And there is one more crystal. If we have a time, we will have a look at it, uh, what it can be. So let's go back to the. Uh, outer processing, and you see it basically 
did the job. So I didn't have to touch everything. He knew because it was collected as a high pressure experiment that the opening duct for this was set up to be uh, 35. He used a proper uh, settings in the processing because of that. And we have a solution. So we probably have to do the proper absorption correction and maybe he uh, mistake one atom and the auto can sometimes do that. But basically the work is done. Knowing the composition, the solution, what it is, now we can go back and do the proper absorption corrections with, with that uh, into my, uh, to, to what to do. So I really want to show you that it's not really hard, uh, although that there are multiple things that can go wrong. If you start good, the auto processing, even from something like that, like looks like frames like this with the uh, lots of uh, from from um, additional signal from the uh, from the DAC, the the Chris Alex Pro will handle this uh, correctly. So uh, I want to go back now uh, to show you the thing that all subtitles will stop the auto processing for working. That means that you cannot index uh, your cell because uh, it's a, one of these hard cases that you can do. So we have different uh, peak uh, hunting algorithms, smart peak hunting and 3D extraction. Histo we can use histograms uh, for, out for easy filtering, advanced options. And of course, crystallization is famous for very in easy indexing option for multi-crystals, twin and incommensurate which just because of the uh, high uh, hyperspectroscopic can happen very uh, often. So uh, just to show you where to access it, how to access it, let me go back to my uh, PC. And basically let's start with this data set and show you that we la access lattice wizard from Crystal uh, and we can go for full auto analysis, but we can do it now manually with the peak hunting button Pick how to use the settings, and I can do the smart pick hunting. And uh, we now have a multi process option, which is nice because it's speed up. So, smart pick hunting is one, two, three, four, few seconds of work. And we have 5,078 reflections. And let's just quickly view how the data set look with the smart uh, pick, uh, pick hunting. And of course, I can show that the automatic finding will work in this because this is just a single crystal. And I can uncheck the wrong one. And uh, you can see the donut shape of the data that we had uh, inside. And then uh, I can move the wrong one uh, to, or just select it. And you, this is the signal coming from the dark. You don't see the periodicity uh, for that. So. Can we achieve something better with the 3D extraction here? Let's start the multi-process. For sure, it's a longer process. So multi-processing is, uh, I would say, advice for that. Uh, what it actually do, he will set, will compare the peak table with similar like he do to the processing. So he will find the centroids on it, uh, rather than just position. And uh, how it looks? So. It looks slightly different. As you can see, we have rings, but I would say that uh, if we refine unit cell on it and uh, display only wrong, we can see more of the additional data, but it still gives you additional information. So on this data set, I would say not lots of changes, but let me show you on, on different, uh, uh, the other one that I show you here, uh, how it actually will work when we have something other than one nice big crystal. So pick hard tick, user settings. I will do the smart, smart one first. Okay, so Evald Explorer for after smart background pick hunting and yes, there is something there. Uh, we can try now manually go and remove the high intensity, it will be probably mostly the diamond. Yeah, and we can, yeah. Could you move your phone away from this, the microphone a bit, please? Okay. Thank you. 
Okay, so we can move uh, we can move the with the histogram of intensity some part of hidden reflection to the second group, and that will be those. And then we can spot that ring causing here and mark it on the D value, also select it and move it to the uh, hidden one. And then when we uncheck, uh, we can make sure that we have a good one unchecked, uncheck the index one, and we can we clearly see that there is a one something else in this crystal also. So what I would do, I will activate twin multi-crystal go in the shown peak custom component because I expected that it's something else. I will uncheck this option and allow to find uh, a second crystal uh, inside this uh, DAC. And uh, if we uncheck all the unnecessary things, uh, I can show you that this is the one uh, the second one, if I rotate about the UB2 and just, uh, yeah, so uh, I, I found a, I've actually small one, so it's not the one that should be found, but uh, should probably clean up a little bit. But I just want to show you how you done this time. I think uh, it's not the one that I should be looking at uh, at the moment. But he found different one uh, still somewhere inside the, the the found reflection. So what is important, you don't have to process it, but it's very important to look on the overlap here and see if the processing as a multi-crystal or uh, or uh, twin is necessary because of the overlap that you had uh, inside it. So uh, I'm looking on example. I know that I had one to show with the indexing. Uh, I think it will be this one, a good one to show you again. So uh, I go pick hunting with user settings. I will go smart one. This is the, I, thought I will move on back to other thing, but I think this one will nicely show you what the, I want to present. So I have this kind of view when I have lots of stuff inside. And again, I, I can do uh, filtering, remove as much as I can manually. I can use the uh, so-called lattice wizard to find the reflections and group select them by selecting some uh, peri uh, periodicity between the layers. But I just want to show you that what happened if I use the new algorithm, the 3D extraction one, of course, multi-process. As you can see, it 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 takes a slightly longer time. Yes. Yeah. So you can see the image. I don't know if you can see it. I can see that the image is slightly more clear this time. So if I go with the filters and just move some strong reflections to the hidden group, replace them. Yes, and I can easily see that the unit cell is found and i'll check the rogue one and there is one and i can see definitely there is something else sitting there and hopefully this time if i activate custom controller it showed uh, uh peaks i will uncheck this one just to be sure but no it is the same cell it's just twin uh, as you can see now clearly from the indexing it is there are two copades. If we have a movie of this crystal, you can see the overlap is not bad. So if we can look on the show crystal movie, we'll go back to the movies. Uh, then I would not say that you can see from it. So it's probably loaded uh, on purpose uh, by uh, by user to be two plates on top of each other, slightly rotated to give you more completeness. But because of the low overlap, it could be processed as a uh, tweet and get the more completeness out of it if you if you like so 3d extraction is a better algorithm more costly but i would like to to know it so the one thing that also i want to show you at the end is that we have such a 
automated uh, processing uh, experiment uh, with the auto advanced filtering. I think this would, would be an example, good one. So this is uh, imported data set from the, so I wanna just show you this is CCD, it's not Rigaku CCD, it's a so data set with a strong meme and you can see this effect on the scintillator when the reflection hitting the scintillator will light up scintillator and it will stay for long time or through the whole measurements all there. And you have those uh, additional signal coming from uh, pure CCD uh, chip. So how that does it look in, uh, in peak hunting? So we do the smart one to be slightly faster. And I want to show you that there's this kind of advanced filtering that will help with such a event. So on the new generation system, it's not, uh, I would say, comparing. So we have, you see our crystal inside there. It's a definitely single crystal. Even on such a data set, I want to show you that it will find the cell correctly uh, without uh, problem. So our search algorithms are working very nice. So this is our crystal, the donut shape with the limited access to, to it. And then in, in filters, you can go to advanced filtering, which says this option, fill diamonds and objects. I know already that 10 works nice with this data set and I can go okay. And as you can see, without playing with the histograms, he removed most of it uh, out of the way of my Eva. So on this one, it's a single crystal, so I don't want to worry, but if you have multi-twinning, if you have a, a incommensurate, uh, which are accessible from here, uh, it's a good tool to quickly remove it, some uh, artifacts from diamond David or all the detector types uh, that use scintillator technology uh, from your data sets to help you just find the proper cell. After that, if you have a uh, proper cell, you can just lock it by using lattice transformation user matrix and selecting the one that you want to have uh, uh, here. So let's say monoclinic and then it will be locked as a user. And then when you go start data collection and automatic data reduction, it will not try to change this cell, change this lower symmetry. He will just stay with the cell and not try to be uh, changing the uh, position for you. Okay, so let's stop this because I didn't want to process this. I just want to show you the user cell. And that brings me to the, uh, the to the what it's called wobble vector and uh, when, what, and where, where. So wobble vector, it, it you can do it after pre-experiment. As you mentioned, if your pre-experiment consists consist of those two, uh, uh, two phi scans uh, or omega scans before manual processing, it's good to check if your sample were really good aligned in the DAC uh, and can you expect some problems with the absorption correction or processing because of the bad alignment uh, and if you refine it successfully, I would say that you have a, you, you, it will be included in processing and some additional correction will be done because of it. So what is it? It's a sample misalignment vector. To understand it, you will have to know the, uh, the uh, or, cap orientation matrix for the crystal and the X is this direction Z uh, in the in the app and of course the y is is forcing us so you can see that because the problem with the centering is in this direction we should expect the x to be the worst one if we didn't put lots of effort in centering it the crystal through the diamond uh, because the other one are quite easy always to center but not uh, given so they are given in millimeters so there is some value of them that makes sense so uh so uh, as you can see after pre-experiment you have a, usually a small amount of reflections so just remember as i show you that you can choose that you can only refine a wobble vector itself whether you are already sure of your cell and try to not refine the uh, full instrument model at such a low amount of the uh of the uh, data to to ratio parameters so this is the same experiment open so you can see wobble vector at pre experiment and on full data set, we have more reflection, we could refine also instrument model correctly. And you can see that the value are different uh, for it. 
but those are just results of uh, least speed refinements. That is still a fine, uh, uh, good aligned crystal. I will not worry if it's uh, changing. I was just showing in the mid second example uh, how it's uh, how it looks uh, when it's bad, and uh, that brings me to the other live presentation. Let me open the data set for you, uh, Wobble Vector. So I collected again our training DAC uh, on purpose misaligned. Not much, but I will show you what actually. I opened the wrong part file. I think let me be sure that I opened the correct one. So I want to have two open. So I want to have open the pre-experiment one. Open the pre-experiment one. And I will do peak hunting because I want to have a very good position of centroid reflection rather than peak position. I will use peak extractions uh, to do that. So even for the small, I will use a peak extraction to have a very good position of that. I will find a unit cell. Uh, I will go look inside. Uh, as you can see, I have small amount of reflection uh, and it's only 6.6. Six. So I'll go with a fine instrument model with the settings. I'll check this one. You see Chris Alice Pro kind of know that he should not refine some stuff that he's not uh, do it because he doesn't have enough data out of the scans that we collected. But I will still uncheck the detector. And even if possible, on such a small amount, I will uncheck everything else. Just try to refine each model vector and see what happened. So I refine this one. And of course, you can see the value where it's here. So it is misaligned in the X direction. And as I mentioned, you should not, for example, refine Z. Uh, it is a very small and Y, but because you don't have enough data uh, out of it uh, from those two rotation scans. But just to show you, I collect the data on this for the training reason, so I can open the full experiment uh, out of this uh, folder to show you that even on full one, I'm getting reasonable, almost exactly the same data set. So if I go here, I have my, uh, let's do quickly pick hunting. This is, yes, but alignment, 3D extraction, So if I find unit cell, I find the unit cell, I re-index uh, it, and I can refine the instrument model. So I have now much more stuff inside that I don't need, but my cell is there. Uh, maybe not the best. I can see that slightly asymmetric of those uh, reflections here, but on I would, on such a small, I would not trust it. And then uh, I can go refine instrument model, take it out, refine the wobble vector. This time uh, you see Chris Alice Pro selected me more parameters and I have more data, so I'm happy with it to allow him to do it. And I, you can see if I can go back to my pre-experiment of this and go back, you can see that the wobble vector of this is quite uh, similar. We have the wobble vector here or Sorry, wobble vector. This is the pre experiment. And did I refine it or not? Uh, it doesn't want to be refined for some reason. Oh, okay. Now it refined. So, uh, pre experiment, the data. So, you see, it's, it's showing that also Y and Z is kind of refined. So, when you have a result from sample wobble, Vector, I will only worry when I'm getting to the tenth of the millimeter. All the rest is in, in, in perfection of this method, just because you don't have enough data, especially after pre-experiment, to, to, to make it reliable. So if you see this value like here, you can act on it, go, remember your, uh, your, remember your instrument model, and you can move depending. So X in plus direction here, Z in plus direction, and Y uh, facing us, and you can adjust your refinement based on that, but only if you know what you're doing and how to uh, uh, how to do it. Yes. So, so the moving on to the processing, the the the, the thing that is uh, the important part of this. Uh, so, how to check if the auto setting of processing are right? 
Uh, I will show you where to check the profit uh, settings where they are printed. Uh, I will show you example of brad processing, uh, inspect automatic dark shadow on frames and on the plots, uh, perform manual data processing uh, with the walkthrough through the assistance, and this, uh, talk about show you all those features that Ross mentioned and explain uh, where the, the in the software. So let's let's go back to one of the data sets. So I auto process one of those uh, data set and they even sold. So let's go back to the this one. Should have it open. And this is this one. So first of all, you have in data reduction printed what uh, opening angle it's used. You can go and see red graphs. Uh, it is not the best scaling plot, uh, obviously, and uh, the R int is uh, not the uh, back one, and the smart back one is quite flat, other than the option. So I would say it's not a bad uh, job here, but if I open this data set, uh, which I have it already open, for example, this one, and I look already on the auto process this is the processing of it as you look on the right graphs i can see this kind of jump uh, down here and uh, we can also go to the background and we can see that the background do this kind of thing and this is what uh, we all people mentioned that there's something wrong with the alignment of the duck uh, and we can see that also on uh, our end this beginning on run five is a huge uh, empty also on run three. So let's let's see, let's see. Put the diffraction condition button on, and navigate to run five or run three. Already we started, and it's empty on the beginning. Only later the information shows, and then run five is similar, even longer, and only later, later, later it shows. And what Fraser meant tried to say that if it was because of the setting of wrong, wrong duck. You would expect to see similar thing from both sides and only we see on one side so i would say that the duck was not aligned properly facing the uh, vector of the your beam uh, in this case so that's the the effect and uh, i can show you how to check the settings what you have they are on top here and you can see this is uh, done what what is ported for you you have your uh, rejection con active you have your uh, rejection reflection with the bad profiles uh, on, and you have your smart background uh, on. So all necessary things uh, are set up by Chris Alice Pro automatically. Uh, and I can show you that if I reprocess the data in with the uh, duck, slightly smaller DAC, I can instantly get the better R int, although that I lose the completeness. And if I process even even in the larger one, it just co completely goes haywire. He doesn't even want to do the frame spreading here. And we can see that the smart background doing this kind of strange things here. So also how to spot if the uh, prof uh, profile rejection filter was disabled by accident. So I can go here and show you that the, uh, the profile rejections uh, uh, is off. So the smart background is on, but reject profile is off. And how it does it look on the data sets? You will get this unusual entries here. And this is when your reflections overlap with much stronger diver reflection or gasket signal. And of course, you see the the if from the, the R int is not much worse than without, uh, but this will be bad and you will get much worse the results to do it. And the effect of average background for this data set uh, also is not the uh, best one. So uh, you can see upscale again, try to uh, handle those misalignment. So how to figure out the, uh, the correct value of your mask? You go here to overlay, go to advance and make sure that the uh, reject is selected and then you can click and I can show you that I use I used to use like to use the integration mask because they are more contrast as you can see 
and you can see how they move with predicted uh, with it. So if I check this rejection, you can see that normally we would expect that are there, but we have automatic shadowing, so we can expect this to do this. So let's find our unlucky run number five and see what's happening on, on the beginning. Yes. So clearly there is no data and we want to integrate data. So how to check? I could use this command line, which is here as a reminder, uh, SVA, and I could do SVA and do free free. Yes. And I can move around and uh, let me just check if I change it actually. Yes. So maybe I have to just click it. I click it and you can see now I don't have integration mask. And only when some reflections are solving up, I will present. Uh, I have to put the integration. Early. Okay. So free free is still, I would say, a little too much, but at least I'm not hitting the empty frames anymore. So not aligning DAC properly on the ergonometer because you losing the access of what you already are limited by sample holder. So you can you look look on the plots. Uh, looking on the scaling kind of defects, looking all your R in jumps, and uh, looking on smart background effects, that you can see that something is going on, and uh, I should probably correct it. So, how to how to uh, how to correct that? Uh, what to do is basically go start stop data reduction with options. And we have your matrix. You always have to check what the matrix is, especially for the high pressure data set. When you process everything, I would say go and check what you want to process. You see, I just set up a twin there, which I don't want to process this way. So I will go uh, load the peak table, find the unit cell, and uh, I can even refine the instrument model here because I have quite enough of reflection to do it. So now I'm I'm uh, I'm happy to to proceed, and only then I can go data reduction with options, or I could do the automatic one if I could just set up the angle. But I want to show you where they are. So one of the options to fight rather than to save some data, not switching not switching the DAC uh, so much would be just remove the uh, beginning of run five from integration here. But just to optimize the DAC, it's much better to just change this one. To free free. I want to show you that if I uncheck the uh, uh, data, uh, the rejections are checked, and then when I check it, this is selected by automatically. It even says so. This is the rejection, uh, but bad profiles, which assumes that every time you you have uh, overlapping two uh, reflections from different kind of the sample size uh, absorption, they will be rejected because they will not matching. And this means that the strong reflection will be uh, uh checked for that and quite for strong reflection we we assume that the profile collection between strong reflections should be almost perfect so no weak reflection will be affected by this uh filtering so move on uh smart background average background if you can see background on your frames you always use a spark part especially when you have this kind of varying background and you have those rings and you have additional stuff it's this what Ross explained, this combination of local and uh, global background uh, and average background. You could use it on high pressure, but only when you have a very clean data set, I would say, uh, because we have the shadowing, it, it will work. But for me, I said smart background always works the best for high pressure, and it's on default on for high pressure experiment. The outline rejection, so this is when you select the, uh, uh, the lower group, and you can change the name. And you can just uh, click it uh, here, give it different names, so I will not overlap, overlap and finish. And he will do the job. You can see he took the new opening angle, free free from me, and he will just now automatic processing everything uh, as we speak. So this is walkthrough where there are important options for the uh, for the processing uh, means. And let's go to my slides, to my cheat sheet, and see what's next for you. So the automatic processing and everything we've done always end up, like Ross mentioned, with 
uh, empirical collection and frame scaling. So if I will go back to this one, if you are, I see you have already nicer R int from the original one, but if you look on the, for example, average background results, and I will try to refinalize it, or I'll check to the automatic one, there is ignore that the mu is high. Just want to show you that, oh, it did. So I can even have a wrong space group. Yeah. Okay. So it, 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 it say that uh, this is the results of the frame scaling and you can see the combination is done this way, but back to slides. So uh, to do the uh, numerical absorption, you will have to describe the sample, but we'll go back to it. So numerical absorption correction and the order which is important is that you do first uh, uh, you do first the uh, ah, so to do that we have to that have that sample description tools and for high pressure crystallography we have this extra option so that uh, integrates with absorb uh, that not only describe you uh, crystal but will also help you to this case when you offset your crystal and it's not in the middle and you have to include that during your experiment the gasket will play more difference that you do so this is explanation for ross this is our training duct is that even under pressure so we just assemble this duct with the crystal inside use it for training and other stuff so it was kind of slightly by me offset to be able to show this feature of uh, gasket selection so that's the reason we obviously for the data collection, you should try to put the crystal in the middle, as everybody here mentioned. So where to look on these tools for the high pressure? They are on the preference tab. Uh, the, you will have it, you will show it in a second. And uh, there is one more option hidden here on the right click. Uh, and good tip is if you can uh, record your movie of your not loaded cast, uh, crystal, you can just then import it back. Uh, to the movie that you recorded and it will just be overlap with your crystal inside the DAC. So that's the easiest part. But if you have not done it or you didn't have option for that, there are some tools that will help, help you. So then when it's done, uh, so we first calculate what it can be calculated. So we do the numerical absorption and uh, to do that, we need to have some results. So that's why we start with the uh, this only the empirical one because we have to have confirmation about the uh, formula to calculate the proper mu, so you can calculate everything numerically uh, back. And then only after that, what is left is left for the uh, for the corrections of uh, uh, with the empirical and uh, frame scaling. And what I would say, the same applies to the regular measurements. If you haven't done everything in most cases correctly, put the crystal in the middle, uh, use a correct beam uh, size. Uh, center everything you can live with only Gaussian with numerical integration uh, 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 correction with the beam profile correction but if you done uh, something wrong you will probably have to do the high pressure dead cell correction so it's not only crystal that is cell so it's beyond crystal phases and this is the the uh, Chris Alice pro straight interface to the absorb program and as you can see you will be asked for lots of information that i will not be able to provide to you you will have to know about your DAC. you have to know about your diamonds you will know have to know what pressure media you use is it uh, the easy stuff like uh, the mixture of water or whatever or some uh, very uh, high pressure media like gases that need those expensive machines to to uh, to be loaded so this everything you have to fill up and then you 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 see that it will take the uh, information about the shape faces and the uh, gasket from Chris Alice okay and you just press okay and it will do the calculation uh, for you straight in Chris Alice Pro so let's go back to data set awesome. so how yeah. much longer do you have because we are now 10 minutes after the original time that the break would have started okay so i ran out of the time like always okay so just i will just show this one and then uh, where to find it and that's all so let me go just back to this uh, tool and of course the data finalized you have those selections 
and if you select faces you have your selection of crystals and in edit you can edit with the movie and the one degree movie is imported if you go preference high pressure tool you will say that you have to be close to zero and then you flip 180 and you are on zero so you can you can go go uh, to quickly do the drag option and do it like this is not the best precise uh, thing so i can add uh, uh, mirror faces okay so i added only one so let's add the other one and mirror faces and then i have something that is you add bounding case for hp there is some information uh, and then you can get thickness of your gasket or assume and also you can say on which diamond the crystal you lying for so i would take the eye for incident and then he will put the eye here and then what it's left to do is to put this one adjust the gasket size uh, hole size so 180 and correct the offset which uh, ross didn't like so much about this trading data set that it's so offset because of that you can see how close the crystal is to the edge and that means all the consequence there but it's important to, to use this tool if you want to use it to uh, with absorb if you do this correctly as i show you then you can go high pressure you can you see now you know what the, uh, uh, this type means we have also javier here but the uh, bolher albax can select the type and you will present it with this wizard when you just answer the type about your question uh, about what you have done with your tag and information about the uh, from the faces and everything gasket everything will be taken from the software itself please okay and that's all so sorry for being too slow with my slides so additional i will just leave it like this so profit merge now with gui x profit batch uh and frame masking this key period that those are advanced tools that we probably can live without uh and uh, thank you and uh, deeply sorry for making it too long uh as to try to do it as quick as possible but there's lots of material to cover so so uh i'll just make one comment here that uh, this is all when things go wrong uh, when it's more difficult yes. and sometimes even autochem can work with high pressure data so it's not necessarily going to be difficult every time where you have to do this uh, i started with the auto processing phaser yes i started showing that it works automatically also <laughs> I, I know i just i just want to reinforce that point that's all yeah so Thank um you. because we're a little bit behind on time going to the break let's meet again in eight minutes so that's 20 past the hour